autoimmune disease, your gut microbiome, and how to fix it. If you suffer from any autoimmune disease, whether it's eczema or psoriasis or lupus or rheumatoid arthritis or any other variety, please take a second to watch this video because it just might shed some light on what's going on in your body and what's triggering your autoimmune flare-ups. I'm Kelsey Ale. I'm a certified nutritional therapist and a gut health specialist at KelseyAle.com. I help people heal their gut and recover from chronic illness and digestive disorders and mood disorders using food and food-based supplements. And I put out a new video every week talking about these topics. So if that seems like something that's interesting to you or relevant, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video. So let's talk autoimmune disease and how your gut health may be contributing to your symptoms. Well, first of all, we know that autoimmune diseases are a case of an overactive immune system triggering the body to attack its own cells. And which cells it attacks varies from disease to disease. So for example, with thyroid disorders like Hashimoto's and Graves' disease, the body is attacking the thyroid cells. In uh, psoriasis and eczema, the body is attacking the epidermis cells or the skin cells. And in rheumatoid arthritis, the body is attacking the joints. Now, one universal symptom of autoimmune disease is a hypersensitive immune system. So people who experience autoimmune disease can have flare-ups that are caused by a wide variety of factors. Now, when poor gut health is triggering your autoimmune disease, typically it's because you have a gut infection. And I've worked with autoimmune clients and a lot of the common infections we tend to see are either candida albicans or a SIBO or small intestine bacterial overgrowth infection. Now, respectively, these are a yeast and a bacterial infection that even in the average person would cause uncomfortable symptoms, but in a person who's predisposed to autoimmune disease, they cause really painful symptoms. There are also a variety of other bacterial infections that are specific bacteria that are correlated with specific autoimmune conditions. So, for example, there is a strain called Yersinia enterocolitica that is associated with thyroid conditions like Graves and Hashimoto's, while there's a subspecies called Klebsiella that is associated with Crohn's disease and rheumatoid arthritis. But really, at the end of the day, any kind of gut infection, whether it's bacterial or yeast or virus or even a parasite, can cause an autoimmune flare-up. And this is because every variety of infectious pathogen releases toxins into the system of the host. And these toxins create inflammation and trigger an immune response. Also, a side effect of gut infections is often an increased number of food sensitivities. And this is because the gut infection causes inflammation in the intestinal tissue, which leads to leaky gut, which causes sensitivities and allergies to a number of common foods. So this creates kind of a double whammy for autoimmune patients because not only is the gut infection causing an immune system flare up, but the gut infection is also leading to food sensitivities, which are increasing inflammation in the body. Autoimmune patients might find that when they actually pay attention to the food they're eating and correlate it to their symptoms, they may notice that there's a lot of different foods that can cause their symptoms to flare up. If you have an autoimmune disease and this sounds familiar, let me know in the comments. You'll probably also notice that in addition to the presentation of your autoimmune disease, you are experiencing other uncomfortable symptoms like digestive disorders, chronic constipation or diarrhea, heartburn and acid reflux and other symptoms like that. And these are also an indication that your poor gut health may be contributing to your autoimmune disease presentation. Now there's also the consideration of environmental factors and environmental toxins that can aggravate and contribute to your autoimmune presentation. Environmental toxins from the cleaning products you use or the health and beauty products you put on your body to the detergents you wash your sheets in or even the air quality in your neighborhood can all contribute to and exacerbate autoimmune symptoms. But today we are going to focus on what you can start doing internally to calm the external presentation of your autoimmune disease. So the number one thing we need to do when working with an autoimmune condition is to begin to moderate the stimulation to the immune system and reduce overall inflammation, both of which we can start to do with our diet. Typically my first recommendation when it comes to building a gut healing protocol is to eat as many vegetables as humanly possible. And while autoimmune patients should definitely eat their body weight in vegetables, there are a few caveats and warnings I have to give before you just dive into the produce section. 
People with autoimmune conditions tend to be sensitive to a compound called solanine. And solanine is a compound that's found in foods you may have heard referred to as nightshades. Foods found in the nightshade family include eggplant, bell peppers, white potatoes, tomatoes, um, the spice paprika, and a few other spices, goji berries, the adaptogen ashwagandha, and several more items. So I recommend that people who experience autoimmune conditions avoid these foods in general ongoing, but do continue to eat all of the other vegetables, especially leafy greens. Blueberries are another food that actually happens to be high in solanine, even though they're not technically a nightshade food. So I would recommend avoiding those for a couple of weeks along with other nightshade containing foods to see if you notice a reduction in your symptoms. In terms of diet, I also recommend cutting out both gluten and dairy for a minimum of four weeks as a trial to see if you notice that that helps reduce some of your symptoms. Both of these foods can cause some level of inflammation in the average person's body, and due to the hypersensitivity of an autoimmune patient's body, they're even more likely to cause a reaction. And if you're really serious, you could take it one step further and explore the AIP diet, the autoimmune protocol or autoimmune paleo diet, which cuts out a majority of foods that are thought to cause inflammation in the systems of autoimmune patients. It is pretty restrictive cutting out all grains, all dairy, all legumes, all forms of sweeteners, all food additives, and several other items, but it is also highly effective. Adding in a high quality probiotic may also be a good idea. However, if you have an autoimmune disease, definitely proceed with caution. If you have an autoimmune disease, you should start off taking a quarter dose or a half dose of a high quality probiotic and just give your body a little bit of time to see if it does generate um, an immune based reaction because probiotics are known to modulate the immune system. Try out the low dose of probiotic for about five days, and if after five days on a low dose you don't notice any reaction, you can choose to increase the dose. But if you do notice a reaction, definitely discontinue use of the probiotic immediately. And because not all probiotics are created equal and you wanna take a really high quality product, I went ahead and linked my recommended brand below the video. All that being said, if you suffer from a chronic autoimmune disease or are even just experiencing an autoimmune flare-up, I 100% across the board recommend doing a comprehensive gut health panel and a comprehensive food sensitivity test ASAP. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. These are the specific tests that I recommend and that I order when I work with autoimmune clients because when you have an autoimmune disease, you need specific personalized answers. You need to follow a protocol that you know will be effective for your body's specific needs so you can heal your gut and reduce inflammation as quickly as possible. Guessing really doesn't cut it when it comes to autoimmune protocols, you really need to test. Now, if you're ready to build a customized gut healing protocol so you can alleviate your autoimmune symptoms and take control of your health, go ahead and click the link below this video to schedule a discovery call with me. I'll talk you through the details and the steps of what the healing process entails, and we can make sure we're a good fit to work together so we can get started on your healing journey. All right, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. This is the fourth video in my gut health and series. You can click here to watch the previous two videos about gut health and acne and gut health and weight loss. If you enjoyed this video and found the information helpful, please hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and make sure to tune in next week to see the next video on how healing your gut can help improve your health and your life. Um, that's it. Take care. Be well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.